In this video, I will be discussing the anatomy of the human eye and vision. And what I will do is discuss the path that a photon will take as it enters your eye and is transduced by a rod or cone on your retina in order to make a signal that can be interpreted by your brain and will allow you to process an image. And so it's one of the coolest parts of anatomy in my opinion. And to begin with, the very first thing that a photon will come across as you see it is called the conjunctiva. And the conjunctiva is the outermost layer of your eye and its job is to protect the cornea. And the cornea is another transparent layer of cells that will let light pass through it and it's specialized. The cornea will also help bend the light slightly uh, because our, our goal at this point is to take incoming light rays and then focus them, make them converge onto uh, one of the cells on the back of our retina that we're going to get to in a little bit. And so as we pass through the cornea, the next thing we're going to pass through is called the aqueous humor. And I should try to write better. <laughs> okay, and so as we pass through the aqueous humor, uh, the next thing that's going to happen in order for a photon to actually make it deeper within our eye is it's gonna to have to pass through something called the cornea, I'm sorry, the pupil. And the pupil is this little opening here. It's not really a thing, it's just an opening with a particular diameter. And the diameter of your pupil is controlled by a muscle called your iris. And the iris has a particular color like brown, green, or blue. and uh, the iris will actually contract or dilate much like you see an aperture do on a camera or a compound microscope in order to let more or less light in. And the reason that's important is because if you're in a dark room, you need a dilated pupil. Your iris needs to relax a lot to let as many photons in so that you can see. But if you step outside into a very bright room, you're going to be inundated and saturated with lots of photons and so you need to uh, contract down your iris and make your pupil a smaller diameter in order to make sense of uh, the onslaught of uh, photons that you're getting. And so after a photon makes it through your pupil, the next thing it's going to do is pass through the lens. And the lens is this white region right here. And the job of the lens, if we took a physics class, is to converge the uh, parallel incoming or incident light rays. And as we'll recall, the lens will take in rays like this and cause them to converge. And we want them to ideally converge at the back of our retina where we'll have a particular cell type like a rod or a cone. And I'll get to that in a little bit. And so as we pass through the lens, the light rays are going to begin to uh, converge. And then what's going to happen next is they're going to pass through something called the uh, vitreous humor. And as we pass through the vitreous humor, we will finally reach the retina. And the retina is going to have a very high concentration of rods and cones. And rods and cones are the actual cell types that are going to be responsible for transducing, which is a fancy way of saying translating the electromagnetic signal, the photon, into an electrical or chemical signal that can be perceived by other neurons in your brain. And the important thing with rods is that you have three types. You've got a, you have red, green, and blue cones. And uh, as we look at the light spectrum, we'll recall that light rays have particular wavelengths from about 400 to 700 nanometers. And so you have three types of cones that correspond to uh, certain spectra within that light spectrum for red, green, and blue accordingly. And so uh, another thing that you'll hopefully remember is that you've got people who are colorblind. And the problem with colorblind people is that they will have defective genes on the X chromosome that was given to them by mom. And when that happens, uh, the cones have a hard time distinguishing between red and green 
wavelengths of light, and that's one type of colorblindness. And so uh, a, a key part of the retina that a lot of optometrists and people care about is this little dimple region here, which is called the fovea. And the fovea is your area that has your highest visual acuity because it has a very high uh, concentration of cones. And if you're looking at an image and you were to draw your peripheral, uh, what you see on your periphery, um, the very center of where you're looking is called, uh, is, is the area in which the light rays are hitting your fovea. And so this region here that you can see most clearly when you're focusing on something, uh, those photons that emanated from that source are what's striking your fovea. And then uh, rods are cones that specialize in D, I'm sorry, rods are uh, cells that specialize in maximizing the amount of detail that you can see. And so after a rod or cone has transduced the photon into a signal, it's going to need to get to the brain somehow. And the way it gets to the brain is by passing through something called the optic nerve. And the job of the optic nerve is to communicate between the rods and the cones and the occipital lobe of your brain, which is where you're doing the actual visual processing. So if you were reading a word, for instance, the characters on the screen are going to have to go through your occipital lobe uh, before you can actually make sense of what you're looking at. And then uh, to kind of wrap things up here, <laughs> slightly like a pun, um, is something called the sclera. And the sclera is the white part of your eye, and its job is to serve as a muscle attachment site. And uh, because we're able to attach muscles onto the sclera, it allows our eyes to move from side to side and up and down, and this helps us uh, be more fit to our environment. And then finally, uh, the last key structure that you should know about the human eye is something called the choroid. And the choroid is right behind the retina, and its job is to uh, be a network of arteries and arterioles and venules and veins which supply the uh, retina with the nutrients that it needs. So it's a network sorry, of arteries. And these arteries will contain oxygen and glucose, which are needed by the rods and cones within the retina in order to actually transduce the visual signals that are coming in. And so this is going to wrap things up for this video. I hope you guys find it useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.